One of the first types of devices that we're going to look at here together is the next generation firewall. You might see this in an exam environment as NGFW. These are remarkable devices. The next generation firewall is not only a really super sophisticated firewall that can inspect packets and make sure that the traffic doesn't contain attacks, but they're also intrusion prevention systems. A lot of the reason for this is Cisco made a massive multi-billion dollar investment in 2013 in a company called SourceFire. And these SourceFire technologies got incorporated into Cisco devices, what they termed firepower devices. So these are very, very sophisticated security devices that can, again, both deep inspect packets and do intrusion prevention. Another important device that we're probably going to have plenty of in our network is access points. You're familiar with access points, I'm sure. You probably have one in your home. The access point allows people to get on the wireless network. Think of it kind of like as the layer two switch for the wireless network. Instead of wired connections that we're plugging into our switches, we're going to be utilizing the Wi-Fi signal in order to make a connection to the wireless access point and then the network resources beyond. Notice there's two main types of Cisco access points. There's autonomous versus lightweight. Autonomous access points are so sophisticated that they don't need any other device to start doing their job. A lightweight access point, on the other hand, is one that really doesn't have a lot of intelligence and it relies on some central controller in order to get its configuration and be managed. As a matter of fact, that's the next category of device we need to discuss, and that is a controller. A famous example of this, and I'm showing four of them on screen right now for you, is the wireless LAN controllers, or WLCs. The wireless LAN controllers are the brains of the operation, especially when you're dealing with all of those lightweight access points out there that really rely on the wireless LAN controllers. Cisco's been really hard at work in management software and even software-defined networking where the management software can, with a few clicks of the mouse, redesign the network. And the premier product that does that for us is called Cisco's DNA Center. DNA, by the way, stands for Digital Network Architecture. And the Cisco DNA Center, as you can see here, is a super impressive product. Notice across the top, it's going to allow us to point, click, and design our networks. It's going to allow us to push out policy to the devices in order to control the devices. It's going to allow us to take equipment that we might have sitting around, like these wonderful CAT 9000 series devices, and it will allow us to provision and deploy those devices. And then finally, it provides a robust set of monitoring capabilities so that once we're deployed and designed, we can stick around and make sure that all of our devices are happy, happy. Next up, we have our endpoints and our servers. We certainly can't forget about these wonderful devices in the network. It's in fact a big part of the reason we're working so hard on building an awesome network. The endpoints are our PCs, our smartphones, our tablets. As a matter of fact, that list goes on and on and on today because of things like the Internet of Things. With the Internet of Things, more and more devices are endpoints that we probably never would have thought of years ago. For example, my smart lights in my home office, they're now considered endpoints. My, let's see, the refrigerator here isn't smart yet, but my thermostat is an endpoint. Yeah, so more and more endpoints all the time. When it comes to servers, there's a wide variety of them. Windows Server, there's Ubuntu Server from Linux, there's Unix servers out there. So plenty of different server operating systems, and guess what? There's plenty of different server, you know, goals. You might have a file and print server. You might have a web server. You might have a database server. So plenty of those in our networks as well. 
So if you take this video and the video before it, these are some of the devices that we're going to be looking at in great depth in the CCNA, especially those routers and switches and multi-layer or layer three switches. And if this went quickly for you, don't have any fears because we're going to be getting into much greater detail about the topics that we looked at and you'll understand it all just beautifully by the time we're done. Thanks so much for watching.